via broadcast from local oh. channels. Oh no. Yeah, we will be one of them, but it's good news because we'll go to satellite till 24 seven. We can do more. Good for you. Yes. I think, I think the voice has to get in. Yes. So we do all these fancy, important interviews. I think one of them will be yours. We will post it. We are putting on Saturday the whole 25 or 20 minutes and we want to put it on the face like listen so they cannot stop us now. So when did, when does the change come? Uh, they give us a deadline actually. They give the ultimatum for the local channels March 26, which is today in two days. It's from Saturday. I think we have to move to satellite. Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. but as you say, the technology can actually be very useful. Always, yes. I think you look great. You look wonderful. Always right, so. Uh, thank you so much, Ambassador, for uh, being there for Afghan women and always being a voice for us. Because I watch at Unama how hard it was three hours, and you're presenting us. Uh, what was your initial reaction when you heard uh, the Taliban change their mind and they didn't let the teenage girls to go to school? What was your feeling? I was angry and I was heartbroken uh, because. Just imagining what this was doing to the lives of so many girls across Afghanistan who wanted to be in school, who were in school, who were thrown out of school, and who had aspirations for their lives that are now going to be curtailed by the Taliban. It was an outrageous move, and there are many, many people who are urging at this moment for the Taliban to reconsider this huge violation of the fundamental rights of women and girls. Secretary Blinken also reacted to such disappointment about the Taliban decision that he didn't allow the girls to go to school. What should the US do at this point to respond to the Taliban? Well, there have already been uh, many verbal responses in terms of condemnation of this action. Uh, there has been a call by members of Congress across the political spectrum from both political parties, uh, also saying that the United States has got to register uh, our views on this uh, in the strongest context. There is a pledging conference, as you well know, coming up very shortly, uh, and I think it's got to be a part of those very serious discussions. Um, and there's recommendations that there be more pronounced sanctions applied to the Taliban uh, in terms of specifically targeted to them so it doesn't hurt the Afghan people, but focused on their travel, their assets, etc. cetera. Uh, this is a move that is unconscionable. And you know, the Taliban said, we are different. Uh, we, now that we are governing, uh, we are going to be very supportive of girls and women, as you heard and we've discussed time and again. Uh, and this move comes, perhaps we shouldn't be surprised, uh, but it is contrary uh, to what they said they were going to do. Uh, March is when the girls go back to school, the children go back to school, uh, the boys are in school, the girls are told once they reach sixth grade, uh, no more schooling. Um, what that does to each girl and what it does to Afghanistan in terms of its potential, uh, the potential of the individual and the potential for the country, uh, it has got to be revisited uh, and it has to be changed so that every girl in Afghanistan from not just the age of um, the youngest, but from sixth grade on through university. She needs to be able to access education. And um, I, I got you. Go ahead, please. I want to say one more thing, Gila, which is the Taliban have said that they have made this move until they can figure out how to comport it with a Sharia and the Afghan traditions. Now that is a ridiculous claim because the Taliban hold a absolutely radical view of Islam that is not shared by any other country. Moreover, uh, true Islam 
that Muslims profess encourages the right to education, says it is a right that should be available uh, at all times uh, to both women and men. Uh, so this is contrary to Islam uh, and it's contrary to the traditions of Afghanistan. Boys and girls were going to school before all of these horrible things happened. Uh, and we know what, what has been reinstituted over the last 20 years. So what they are basing their decision on does not, as we say, hold water. Yeah, they talk about uniform, but Afghanistan has been segregated and we grew up with a uniform. All the girls have black outfit and a white scarf. So what else they really want to put these kids? They can have maybe mask or something, what they're thinking. Anyway, so a State Department in Boirina Amiri told VOA, she, she shared an exclusive message with us that the world and Afghans uh, especially disappointed with the Taliban and it will really impact the trust uh, in their leadership. So how the prominent Afghan women rights also in the US can come together to raise their voices when it comes to the Taliban dealing with the women rights in Afghanistan? Well, I think there is a lot of work going on. As you mentioned, Rina Amiri, uh, who is the U.S. envoy recently appointed for women, girls, and human rights. Uh, her mandate is to really pursue these issues vigorously. Uh, as you also said so rightly, uh, there are so many women within Afghanistan and now outside who've been forced to leave because of their uh, positions and, and the threat to their lives uh, that the Taliban have represented. And they are using their voices. We at Georgetown, for example, uh, have a project that is, uh, since the evacuation work, uh, based on, uh, it's called Onward for Afghan Women, equipping them in ways that they can use their voice uh, to to discuss and 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 work uh, with the media, with Congress, with policymakers, uh, both in our country uh, and interconnected as we are with the rest of the world, to talk about these issues in a way that is not the West talking about them, but it is Afghans talking about them. Uh, and I think that's vitally important to have the perspective of Afghan uh, women, particularly uh, on these critical issues. And, and Rena, of course, is representing the United States, uh, but her family was forced to leave Afghanistan many, many years ago. And she knows uh, and has worked assiduously since uh, to really support uh, Afghanistan and Afghan women and girls in particular. Ambassador, we lost the first female Secretary of the State, Madam Albright. I'm sorry for your loss as well. She was a fan and friend of Afghanistan. Once she said that peace cannot be made on the backs of Afghan women, without backs of Afghan women. So do you agree with this, that Afghan women have lost their achievements because peace deal with the Taliban? Well, let me take that from various viewpoints. Uh, first of all, in terms of uh, Madeleine Albright. Uh, yesterday was a sad day for many reasons, and it is an extraordinary coincidence, a terrible coincidence, that she would die on the same day that the Taliban would announce that girls beyond sixth grade could not go to school. Madeleine Albright was passionate about the rights of women and girls. A refugee herself, she understood uh, what freedom and independence meant. And you know, one of the first things she did as Secretary of State when she traveled was to go to Pakistan and meet with Afghan women refugees. And she told them that she would never forget them. And as she said to me, I told them this all of those years ago, and I will work as long as I live uh, to further them. Uh, and she was part of many, many discussions um, in the last several months of her life uh, working on this issue. So we have all lost a very close friend um, in Madeleine Albright. When it comes to women in peace, uh, we know so well that 
Women are victimized by war. Uh, they paid a price for war, but they are not just victims. They are agents of change. They are leaders and their participation is absolutely critical uh, to any co country. The, the condition of women and the condition of a country go hand in hand. Um, and the condition of women in Afghanistan is continuing to deteriorate. You mentioned the deal between uh, the United States and the Taliban. Uh, I, for one, thought that was a terrible, terrible deal, uh, that it was done without any participation from the Afghan government. Uh, and all of the things that the Taliban swore to do uh, in that deal, from renouncing al-Qaeda to stopping the violence, never came to fruition. Uh, and I know that so many Afghans felt uh, that the Taliban were validated by that agreement, uh, and it was uh, the beginnings of their worries about the future of their country. Um, um, Ambassador, you also you're very influential in the current administration. Do you think you can use your influence in the current administration to bring more attention to Afghan girls and women, and especially education, which is very critical for them. Well, you know, uh, Gila, I will do everything I can uh, to uh, use my voice and the work that we do at the Georgetown Institute for Women, Peace and Security. Uh, but there's only so much one can do. I continue to weigh in with all of the principal uh, actors. Uh, and, and I think it's important to keep the community beyond uh, individuals like myself, the broader community of the voices of Afghan women and Afghans in general uh, on these issues. Uh, there is continuing strong support uh, and that needs to be um, very pronounced and prominent because you know as well as I do uh, that the Taliban wouldn't would like nothing more than to make Afghan women invisible uh, because to the extent that they disappear, the, uh, the Taliban can continue on the course that they are on. And what have we been seeing over the last many months uh, since August? We have been seeing, you know, more extrajudicial killings, targeted killings. We've seen the rights of women being stripped repeatedly. Uh, women demonstrators being detained and thrown in prison. Uh, now girls announcing in the month of education back to school, announcing, no, if you're over sixth grade, you can't go back to school. So there is much uh, that needs to be uh, voiced through the multilateral organizations, our participation in those organizations, as well as through our individual governments, uh, as well as uh, the voice of the people loud and clear to the world so they know what is happening. So how do you see the role of Islamic countries contributing or making the Taliban to con convince them to respect women's rights? And also Rina Amiri was speaking to a number of Islamic states on the level of the, they would talk to the Taliban. And how do you see overall this thing dealing with women's rights in Afghanistan and why Taliban are not really listening? Well, I think it is critically important. You know, we have long talked about the importance of the region. Uh, and many of the countries are predominantly Muslim countries. I think first and foremost, when we talk about something like education, uh, where they understand there is no uh, light between Islam and education, that there is no inconsistency uh, between educating a girl and a woman and and Islam. Those countries can be particularly strong uh, in Afghanistan on this issue. Some have been running schools uh, for years uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, others have good relations, uh, embassies that are still functioning, uh, where they could have uh, direct conversations with the Taliban on this issue. And I think it's long overdue uh, not to not to pinpoint uh, an issue like this, for example, that we're discussing today and the role that these governments and uh, prominent and influential leaders 
in these countries can be playing uh, in Afghanistan, particularly uh, in their conversations with and interventions with the Taliban. So are you aware of any change of policy in the scope of the current administration towards Afghanistan? Because Taliban are ruling for almost seven months. What will be your um, input or recommendation for them? For, I'm sorry. I... Are, are you aware of any change of policy for Afghanistan, for towards the Taliban in Afghanistan? And could you just, what would be your recommendation for well, the administration? I think... Excuse me. I think there are ongoing uh, efforts, obviously. We worked very hard to get a strong uh, renewal of the UNAMA mandate as part of the UN Security Council. Um, I think by everybody's uh, observation and understanding, that is a strong mandate uh, for uh, the UN presence in Afghanistan. It has very strong uh, components focused on women and girls, focused on human rights, human rights monitoring, on education. Uh, and that is one of the prominent vehicles with which the nation, uh, the United Nations of the world can uh, continue to uh, put a focus on uh, Afghanistan. Obviously, uh, any kind of relationships with the Taliban uh, have to be underscoring these issues. Uh, and uh, it's one example uh, of uh, the appointment of Rina Amiri uh, is the commitment of the United States uh, on the issue of women and girls in Afghanistan. So it's really working regionally, it's working multilaterally, uh, we don't have an embassy anymore in uh, Afghanistan, as you know, uh, but but the United States obviously uh, has con considerable uh, power and suasion on the world stage. Uh, and I think uh, what happens in the pledging uh, meeting that's coming up uh, with many of the, the nations that have been long involved, all of this is part of uh, what the United States is continuing to do in this space. So for last question, thank you so much for your time. How, how can you U.S. use its leverage uh, over the Taliban at this point to avoid further loss and damages for Afghan people? And you mentioned uh, the abuses and human rights reports we get all the time. What is the leverage that they can really use uh, to avoid further damage? Well, I think the the leverage continues to be. Uh, many of the many of the uh, ways in which I already pointed out, we need to we need to be engaged, uh, and I think that uh, you know the the Taliban want nothing more uh, than to be recognized by the world, than to be the legitimate governance of Afghanistan. Uh, that can't happen. Certainly, uh, it can't happen with these kinds of horrific human rights violations. Uh, continuing. So, so perhaps one of the most uh, strongest levers uh, is the, the fact that recognition will, will and must continue to be withheld unless there are obviously dramatic changes that nobody sees happening um, now or, or who knows uh, in the future. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Ambassador. I, I love uh, I love to talk to you long. <laughs>